Sanitation standard operational procedures detail how workers are to clean and sanitize, how sanitizers are to be used and mixed, and how and when tasks should be completed. SSOP should also detail how and where equipment and utensils are to be used and stored. The SSOP should be reviewed by management periodically and be updated as needed. Another way to check on the effectiveness of all cleaning and sanitation activities is to conduct environmental monitoring. There are various types of monitoring, such as bacterial swabbing and the use of luminometers that use bioluminescence in showing whether a surface has been cleaned and sanitized properly. Luminometers measure the amount of organic matter that may be left on food contact surfaces after inadequate cleaning and sanitizing. The amount of organic matter is read in the form of numbers from 1 to 6, with anything under 2.5 being considered acceptable. This form of monitoring allows for immediate feedback and can pinpoint problem areas that need more thorough attention. Firms may conduct these monitoring activities in-house, or they may choose to hire an outside lab. Outside labs should be qualified by the proper authorities in order to conduct monitoring activities. Check with your local or state authorities for qualified labs in your area. If a firm chooses to monitor in-house, proper procedures should be followed at all times, and all monitoring should be documented and verifiable. It's always recommended that whatever methods used provide accurate results. The importance of acceptable equipment construction in proper cleaning and sanitizing activities can be summed up in one word, biofilm. Some common examples of biofilm in everyday life might include the plaque which can grow on our teeth or the algae in a stream growing on river rocks. As it relates to sprouts, biofilms are a collection of bacterial cells that attach to equipment and other surfaces in food plants and surround themselves with a protective layer of complex carbohydrates. Various pathogens such as Listeria, Salmonella, and E. coli 0157H7 have been shown to form biofilms that can contaminate food products during production. Biofilms can be found on the surfaces of product lines, growing trays or drums, spinner baskets, stainless steel and plastic conveyor systems, and any food contact surface. Bacteria in biofilms are difficult to detect and control. Once established, the bacteria in biofilms are extremely resistant to sanitizers, disinfectants, and heat treatment. However, biofilms take days to build up. Timely and proper cleaning and sanitizing can deactivate the bacteria in the early stages of formation. Sanitation workers should carefully follow all cleaning steps, pre-rinse, clean, post-rinse, and sanitize every time. The cleaning crew should also carefully follow the directions for the concentration, temperatures, and contact times for all cleaners and sanitizers. They should ensure that those cleaners and sanitizers used reach all food contact surfaces. This can be accomplished by inspecting all equipment and surfaces after cleaning, both visually and through microbiological monitoring of the environment. Following the SSOPs is critical in controlling biofilm formation. It's also important that any rusty, pitted, or deteriorated equipment and food contact surfaces be repaired or replaced. Rust and deteriorated equipment allow for the growth of bacteria and become difficult to clean, which makes the formation of biofilms very easy. Pests can and do contaminate foods and transmit disease. Safe and effective control and exclusion is a priority. All insects, rodents, and birds, as well as domestic animals, should be excluded from the facility at all times. Proper pest control and exclusion can be separated into two categories, physical controls and chemical controls. Physical controls include items such as window screens, screen doors, proper weather stripping of all doors, plastic curtains, and air fans at all doorways. Even the practice of keeping all doors closed serves as a physical control. Proper removal and storage of waste products from the facility, removing old, unused equipment, and maintaining the exterior grounds surrounding a facility all serve to remove possible vermin attractants. Keeping a cleared space around the exterior perimeter of the building is also helpful. Proper storage of ingredients, finished products and packaging, as well as the timely cleanup of spills and the proper lighting of the facility all help in discouraging vermin infestations. Chemical controls consist of the use of pesticides, traps, and baits in and around the facility. It's suggested that a licensed pest control operator conduct these activities. 
Any chemicals used in pest control applications should be acceptable for use in a food processing facility and their application should not contaminate foods, ingredients, or food packaging. All pest control chemicals should be stored properly. They should not be stored on food contact surfaces or in any areas of the facility where they could contaminate ingredients, finished products, or packaging. All pest control activities should be routinely monitored and recorded. Proper monitoring will show the effectiveness of those activities and can identify areas that need more attention. Remember, chemical controls can only be effective when used in conjunction with well-established physical controls. The primary goal of a successful pest control program is to exclude all pests.